But now it's time for the Word of God. Brother and Sister Herring are dear friends of us and dear friends of the Pentecostals of Cooper City. They have blessed us so many times with a word from God, a prophetic word from God. I am glad that they are not here just uh, uh, via the video, but they're here live in our congregation, in our church, coming to you over the video. But we're glad that they're in the house, in your home, in our home, at POCC 5201 South Flamingo Road. So now grab your Bibles, but open your hearts for a prophetic word of God on this Pentecost Sunday from the man of God that God chose for this day to speak to you, to speak to our hearts. God bless you, Brother Josh Herring. We're so glad to have you back home at the Pentecostals in Cooper City. Thank you, Pastor Hannibal, and praise the Lord, everybody. What a powerful atmosphere is in this room right now. I wish everybody could be here with us because the Spirit of the Lord has invaded this place in a mighty, mighty way. I give honor to your pastor in your house or in your vehicle, wherever you are right now. Would you just get real loud and thank the Lord for your pastor? Aren't you blessed to have such a great man of God in this time and hour? What an incredible visionary and leader. And I've, I know one thing about Pastor Hadabaw is he loves his church and he loves his city. And not just corporately, he loves everybody individually. I've never seen a pastor with more love for each person in the congregation or the city than this man of God. And I give him high honor this morning. So thankful to be with all my friends here. Not well, three or four. I don't have a lot of friends. Three or four friends here. And I give honor to them, Brother Volan, Brother BB, Brother Guttridge, and Brother Daniel. Good to see you. I'm so thankful to be here today with you. I give honor to my beautiful wife and kids who we traveled uh, about 10 or 11 hours here to be here with you in the building. And uh, so thankful to be part of the kingdom of God crazy time we're living in right now we need God to do something powerfully in our nation in Jesus name the book of Mark chapter 2 and the book of Acts chapter 2 today is Pentecost Sunday the birthday of our church and we're so thankful to be alive in this day and hour and the greatest hour of revival that God is unleashing on this planet is about to manifest Mark chapter 2 verse number 1 in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. If you're at home, say he was in the house. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, or with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to preach to you, wherever you may be this morning, for a few moments from the subject, Jesus is in your house. Jesus is in your house. Would you join with me in prayer right now? I want the atmosphere to change wherever you are. Let the presence of the Lord come into your home. I take authority in the name of Jesus over any spirit that tried to linger in your home last night or in this morning. And I pray right now for an atmosphere of peace and an atmosphere of anointing to be in your house right now where you can hear the word of God and receive it. And the atmosphere will cause you to worship and feel the presence of God sweep over you and rush over your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and somebody at home yell out amen as loud as you can and we're so thankful to be a part of what God is doing in Jesus name amen there is nothing more powerful than a God visitation there's nothing more powerful than any human being will experience than a visitation from the Almighty God into their life. When Jesus enters the room, they couldn't have chose a better song. When Jesus enters the room, something changes. Something in the atmosphere changes. Miracles happen when the presence of God enters a house or a vehicle or a family or a sanctuary or a body. Something takes place. 
place when the presence of Almighty God comes into a home. Throughout the Word of God in the Old Testament, there were crazy encounters of the presence of God or heaven, heavenly visitors coming to homes. And when the presence of the Lord entered that home, something drastically changed. Miracles throughout the Old Testament happened. Rahab's house had a miracle. In Egypt, the death angel passed over every home that was covered by the blood. Elijah raised the first person from the dead inside of a house. And so you understand the word of God is full of miracles that happen in houses. I'd like to start off by telling you right now, even though you may not be in the sanctuary with the body of Christ, you still serve the same God. And if he comes into your house on this Sunday morning, something can happen in your family right now. You can be healed of cancer in your house right now. A lady told me last year she was watching one of our services and she had a basketball sized tumor in her stomach and she was watching the service and from her living room and when everyone began to shout hallelujah in the altar call she raised her hands and began to shout hallelujah and she said it felt like a vacuum entered her stomach and pulled something out and her stomach went flat and when she went to the hospital there was no cancer in her body because we have a shut up we have a god that can get into your house and release miracles instantly amen and you understand you need to fight for the atmosphere in your home to be an atmosphere of faith. Paul said fight the good fight of faith. Now those two words fight are two totally different words. The first word fight means to engage with an adversary, to contend with an opponent. But the second word fight, fight the good fight of faith means the assembly or the arena where the fight takes place and up until a couple of months ago when you would come into church on Sunday morning in the sanctuary that's where you would fight for your faith that the devil had fought you all week long for in your house but shut up but can I tell you right now even though you can't get in here you need to transform the atmosphere of your house and make your house the arena and the assembly where you fight for your faith don't let the devil make you backslide just because you can't be in the presence of God in the sanctuary but instead make your house a sanctuary where the glory of God can be invited in on a daily basis oh hallelujah but there's something about Jesus getting into the house that changes things. The first time Jesus Christ physically was in somebody's house, he wasn't two, he wasn't five, he wasn't ten, he wasn't even born. He was a seed inside of Mary's womb. And when Mary went into Elizabeth's house, Elizabeth was pregnant with a baby six months along, but the baby had not moved. But the presence of Jesus inside of Mary's womb, when she walked, walked inside of Elizabeth's house the baby inside of Elizabeth leaped the Bible said and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost the only human being to ever receive the Holy Ghost before the day of Pentecost was somebody who had Jesus shut up enter into her house if he comes in your house on this Sunday morning he can fill anybody that's in your family that needs his spirit with his spirit Oh, hallelujah. The next time we find Jesus in a house, he's two. And wise men travel from afar and they find him in the house. And this is so powerful that they laid down their gold, their frankincense and myrrh. That was never meant for Jesus. That was their trading goods to go through borders and countries to get back to their native land. But when they were in the presence of a Jesus in the house, even though at two, they knew he would do nothing for them. Something about them said, if I'm in the house with Jesus, he's worthy of everything I can give. Real worship is when you say, he may do nothing for me, but he's still worthy of everything that I have. And they worshiped him in the house. And that very night, an angel of heaven came down to the house and gave them direction on a different route to go home where the life of Jesus would be spared. Think about that. 
all because they encountered him in the house with worship the second miracle he ever did he entered into a house Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever of all things actually and he went into the house and he touched her hand in the house and the fever left her body instantly he he can heal your fever right now as you're watching online I fact I speak it in the name of Jesus someone that feels a fever in their body God can heal you right now in in fact, I speak for you to be healed in the name of the Lord. Let that temperature drop in Jesus' name. Something powerful about his presence. He started doing miracles in houses. And before long, when you, you, if people found out he was going to be in the house, nobody could get in the house. In fact, when they carried the lame man to meet him to be healed, they couldn't get in the house because the Bible said it was noised abroad that he was in the house. He had done so many miracles in houses that people realized if he's going to be in the atmosphere, we've got to get to where he is. And so they tried to get in the front door and they could not the back door and they could not so they climbed the roof and they whooped open the roof and they lowered him down you know the story if you've read Mark chapter 2 and he forgave him of his sins and he raised him up miraculously inside of a house uh, what about Jairus's daughter who was dying and sick and when Jesus was walking down the road Jairus came to him and said please come to my house and heal her and Jesus got delayed on the way and had to heal the woman with the issue of blood and by the time he healed her Jairus's daughter had fallen over dead and so the people came to Jairus and said it's too late she's already dead and Jesus said take me to your house and when Jesus came into the house there were people there that were mourning they were weren't real mourners they were hired to come in and mourn they were actually changing the atmosphere to make it a terrible negative atmosphere and they were hired to do this and so Jesus knew I'm about to give a miracle in this house but before I release the miraculous into the house I've got to change the atmosphere of the house and so he removed the atmosphere of depression and doubt and anxiety and grief and I wish someone would get their mouth open at home right Right now and tell depression to get out of your house and tell fear to get out of your house and tell anxiety to get out of your house I wish Shokata I wish there was a dad that would man up on hell right now and look the devil in the eye and say the atmosphere is about to change in this house <laughs> kicked out the mourners raised her from the dead what about the woman pastor had of all that was had a girl possessed with the devil and the bible said jesus went to a house to hide himself he was literally so thronged by people he he tried to find a house where nobody could find him but when you're jesus you can't be hidden no matter what house you go to and he's hiding in the house and here she comes it's not even her time yet she's not a jew it's not her day yet he's not even sent to her yet she's not supposed to ask for anything yet and she breaks in the house and says i've got to have a miracle my kid is at home possessed with the devil and the bible said jesus looked at her and called her a dog <laughs> kind of degrading and said I can't cast the children's meat to the dogs. Watch this. And she looks back at him, at God Almighty, and says one of the most profound things in the Word of God. She looks back at him and said, Yet the dogs, if they get under the master's table can get the crumbs. In other words, she said, uh, she didn't try to argue what she was. She's talking to God. She said, I know I can't change who I am, but I also know you won't change where I am. And if I, I might be a terrible person, but if I get into the house where the master is, if I get close enough to where the master is, even if it's at a dinner table, his presence can come down and instantly deliver. And Jesus said, I can't even argue with that. Go home. And from that same hour, her 
daughter was delivered. What about the centurion with a servant that was sick and dying? And Jesus was near the house. And he said, let me come heal him. And the centurion said, I'm a man under authority. But if you just speak the word, I know that the word on the street can get into my house. And when the word hits my house, it will hit my servant. And my servant will be resurrected. That's the power of the word of God. I'm in a sanctuary. And you might be in a vehicle. But if the word gets in your vehicle, if the word gets in your office, if the word hits your sick child, the word will raise up a miracle. No matter where you are. And then Jesus, and I could talk about many more, but when he left this earth, he told them to receive the Holy Ghost. And he said, I have been with you, but I shall be in you. And he left them and said, I want you to go to a house. And I want you to tarry there in an upper room. They tarried for 10 days. They weren't in a church building. They weren't in a sanctuary. In fact, you'll find in the book of Acts, a lot of miracles take place in houses, not in the sanctuary. Because a true book of Acts church has miracles outside the building and outside the sanctuary walls. And the first outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost happened in a house. And the next outpouring, several people got it and the house was shaken the place was shaken and then Paul received the Holy Ghost inside of a house Cornelius received the Holy Ghost inside of a house the Philippian jailer and his household were baptized in their house you'll find salvation when it explodes in the book of Acts usually happen in a house don't tell me God can't give you the Holy Ghost right now in your living room. It's all over your Bible. He can pour out his spirit in your home right now. No matter what you've done, you can receive the greatest miracle of all time in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your garage. Uh, you might be walking around with your phone and your AirPods on right now, but I'm telling you if Jesus gets a hold of you, he can fill you with his spirit right now. You may not be able to get close to human beings, but there's no God rule. You might have to socially distance yourself from people, but Jesus is not bound by the laws of this land. He's coming into your house right now. He's not trying to get six feet from you. He's trying to get inside of you to change you forever. How do I receive the Holy Ghost? You repent of your sins. Oh, You'd say, God, I can't do this. Oh, I can't live like this. Because if you don't repent, you'll be swayed by every emotion, every feeling, every mentality. We all have to repent of our sin. We're all flesh. We're all able and capable of making mistakes and failing. We all need the mercy of God. We all need the grace of God. We all need God to deliver us from like but Brother Volan talked about, from racism, from all those hatred things, from anger that's loose in America. We need God to intervene in our country. We need to repent if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will heal them I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land there's something powerful about knowing that no matter who you are you need to repent to a God that can change the atmosphere of your mind and of your life number two you need to say God I desire your presence I desire your spirit in my life. I desire your love. I desire you inside of me. I want it more than I want anything else. I want it more than I want a vehicle, more than I want a home, more than I want fame, more than I want everything to go back to normal. I want your presence inside of my life. Number three, you've got to focus your mind on God. You've got to tell God nothing is as important as consuming myself with your Spirit. It's time for some apostolics to get back in your Bible. Get back into the Word of God. Let the Lord be your focus. Let the Lord be your desire. Let the Lord be your will and your drive. And you have to have 
faith that God's going to give you a miracle in your home. And when you start to worship God in a few moments in your home, you have to worship him with faith, expecting him to fill you with his spirit and or do a miracle in your kid or change something in your marriage or heal something in your body. But whatever you do, you need to worship him uninhibited. I'm not here to entertain you. I didn't drive 10 hours, 12 hours to entertain you. I've come to tell you with God's anointing upon me, it's time for the presence of God to get into your house. It's not entertainment you need. You need a visitation from the Almighty God into your home that makes you feel what you feel in this sanctuary. Two weeks ago, my wife's 42-year-old uncle more like a cousin but uncle died in westlaco texas diehard catholic the whole family was except for my wife and i and but when he was 14 god filled him with the holy ghost he was baptized in the name of jesus went in and out of prison gangs horrible started having liver failure and all kind of things a few weeks ago was getting ready to go to the hospital. Told his mom, who's a diehard Catholic, my wife's grandma, he'd been repenting every day for what he had done wrong. Went to the hospital and died two days later. They called us to preach the funeral. We drove 15 hours one way to preach the funeral. All the way on the border of Mexico. And we get down there, and when I get ready to preach the funeral, everybody in the room, except for my wife and I, does not believe this truth. My wife's parents are over here. They believe the truth. But, but, but as far as everybody from that area, none of them. None of them. And when I started to pray, they, they did, and I'm not making a lie, I'm just telling you what happened. They did their, the Catholics uh, cross symbol, and they just they stared at me. And I preached about her uncle, and I put him in the hands of God. I said, I don't know what happened, but I do know that I'm not putting him in the hands of his past. I'm putting him in the hands of a merciful God that filled him with his spirit, washed away his sins, forgave him at the end when he repented. And everyone looked at me, and I got done. And as I was done, that tiny little funeral home, maybe 50, 60 people, the grandma, the diehard Catholic, the one with all the candles at home and all the beads and all the stuff. She's sitting on the front row. She's crippled with arthritis. And she's sitting on the front row as her son is right there. And she begins to rock back and forth. And then she began to say this. She said, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then instantly God filled her with the gift of the Holy Ghost. She fell over on the pew and began to speak with other tongues. No one touched her in fact her oldest son ran up to her and was trying to stop her he was physically trying to stop her and the more he tried to stop her the more God filled her and then her daughter ran up to her and when she touched her mother God filled the daughter with the gift of the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in tongues nobody touched them except the Jesus that is not bound by social distancing he can come wherever you are and he can deliver you and he can rescue you and he can fill you the man walked up to me afterwards and he said i used to have that he said i raised my hands and i want i want to start to speak in tongues but my family stopped me he said are you coming back to preach ever i said yeah i'm coming in july a few hours away he said i'm bringing my entire family we want this holy ghost I dismissed the funeral three times and nobody would move because the glory of God had entered an atmosphere and they had never felt his presence. It wasn't in a Pentecostal sanctuary. It wasn't in a funeral home where everybody had masks on but me. And they were sitting there. And it doesn't matter if you've got a mask on. God can go through the mask and fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what's going on. The government can do this and do that. But they cannot stop your Jesus from getting to you. That's what I've come 12 hours to preach to you. That no matter what you're physically dealing with and what you're emotionally dealing with, 
and what you're mentally dealing with and all the craziness of our world. This world needs God. That there's nothing that can keep our Jesus from coming to you right now and filling you with peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, if you're at home, I want you to stand. I want you to get your family together in the living room. If you're in the vehicle and you want the Holy Ghost, I want you to pull over right now. I want you to find somewhere to pull over. We're going to pray together and we're going to believe that God is going to do miracles. I don't know all the needs in this church. I'm sure if we went to every household, there'd be different needs. I'm sure there's financial needs and emotional needs and physical needs and, and marriage needs and all kind of things going on but I'm telling you that we have a God that's greater than our crisis and greater than our government and greater than anything or any power that tries to reign we have a God that sits high but looks low and has mercy available to everybody on this planet amen I want you to close your eyes if you can and I want you to repent of your sins with me. I can't repent for you. And you can't repent for me. But you can repent with me. I want you to repent. I want you to tell God forgive me. Right now Lord forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my attitude. If my attitude's been against you God. I repent for my spirit. I repent for having an ungodly attitude. I repent for having an ungodly uh, mentality. Lord forgive me for the sins of my mouth. Forgive me for the sins of my mind. Forgive me for the sins of my ears and my eyes and my heart. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord, that you would forgive us and you'd forgive our nation as Daniel stood in the gap. I pray that the church would stand in the gap and would repent for America. I pray somebody would repent in Jesus' name. I pray somebody would say, God, bring mercy and not judgment. Bring mercy. I pray pray to our nation and heal the broken and the hurting and the suffering. Heal the angry. Heal those that are frustrated. Heal somebody's heart. I pray God for a visitation from your presence into households not just in Cooper City and in Fort Lauderdale in the Miami area but I pray across our nation that you would begin to visit homes from the north to the south and the Ikotashete and the east and the west. I pray God in our cities that you would bring healing that you would bring peace that you would bring freedom and that you would bring justice and that you would bring righteousness and that you'd invade our land with revival and now wherever you are in your home i pray that you would thank the lord for forgiving you right now and I pray on this Pentecost Sunday in 2020 as across the world people are going to be getting the Holy Ghost all over the world today in their houses I pray today that you would be one of those people whether you need it for the first time or the millionth time that you would begin to raise your hands in your house or in your apartment or in your bedroom teenager wherever you are and you begin to worship God and as you begin to worship God I'll pray a small prayer of faith and I'll tell you to start shouting hallelujah and don't you hold it back you begin to worship God with all your might and when those words start to come to you that don't make any sense that's the spirit of God trying to get inside of you when those words come into you don't hold them down but release them let them flow in your house let them flow into your bedroom change the atmosphere are you ready by the authority of the word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus Lord you said in the last day saith God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh let it happen right now in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah and begin to worship him let the Lord overwhelm you let the Lord saturate you let the Lord consume you let the Lord renew you let the Lord give you joy let the Lord give you peace let the Lord give you anointing There is a pressure at home when you're watching 
to get distracted, to go do the dishes, to go fold the laundry, to go talk to the kids, to eat with the message on the background. I'm asking you to not be distracted right now. Because if you let that mentality get on you, when you get back in the sanctuary, I've already seen it, I've been preaching across America the last month. You get mentality will get on you. When you get back in the sanctuary, you'll want to be entertained. Because you'll become accustomed to watching while distracted. So dad, dad and mom, please right now. Hold each other's hand. Get the kids around you. And pray with me. Somebody cry out for our nation. Somebody cry out for your family. Somebody cry out for the suffering. For the hurting. For those who've been done wrong. Let some families. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. I feel an anointing on me. If someone needs to change the atmosphere of your home. Jesus is not trying to entertain you. You can't view Sunday mornings like Netflix. You can't view Sunday morning like social media. You've got to make your house a sanctuary. You've got to make the atmosphere of your home a place where angels want to be. Oh, somebody pray with me. Normally I'd let it go. I really would, but I don't feel let it go right now. Because the average altar call in church lasts seven minutes. The average altar call at home lasts far less. Come on, mom, drive out that spirit in your house. Come on, teenager, pray through. Come on, dad. Come on, dad. Come on, dad. Every once in a while, we all need a good washing of the spirit of God. The Spirit of God is real. It's the greatest miracle you'll encounter. Let demons flee the houses right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray your angels will be loosed. I pray against the atmosphere of arguing and strife and division and frustration in our homes and i pray for an atmosphere of peace and unity like pastor said and unity in the holy ghost come on someone get your family unified right now come on apologize to your family if you've been being uh, you know if you've been being mean or something apologize to your kid apologize to your parents i feel the holy ghost trying to get into houses right now close with this when this all started the Lord spoke to me and said that with this attack the Bible talks about in the Gospels that the, at the end of the world there would be reaping angels reaping angels and the Lord spoke to me and said everyone is afraid of this pandemic and this stuff this virus that originated in Asia and he said this I have dispatched angels from Asia to America reaping angels for the reaping angels of America reap in sanctuaries but the reaping angels in Asia reap in houses bedrooms apartments bathtubs become baptistries and therefore there will be reaping in houses because I have dispatched angels to houses. And I'm here to tell you in the name of Shatarukusataya, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that angels are closer to you than you think you are. They are. They're closer than you think. And all you need to do is change the atmosphere, kick out the mourners, and say, God, we need you right now. This world's about to go down. This world's coming to an end. There's everything's going on like you said it would. In the last days, there'd be wars, rumors of wars. Nation would rise up against nation. That's 
ethnos against ethnos in the Greek, which is ethnicity against ethnicity. Kingdom against kingdom. That's country against country in the Greek. You said there'd be famines, there'd be earthquakes, and there would be pestilences. We don't have to look overseas. It's all in our face. And then you said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And I say this to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in the last days. For all I know, this could be the very last Pentecost Sunday on this planet. Lord, I pray. I pray that you would get into the homes of the church and of those you're trying to reach, God. I pray you'd fill them with your spirit. I pray for angels to encounter humans. I pray for things to happen. I pray for you to get people's attention the only way you can. I pray for you to do what you've got to do. <laughs> I pray you reach the backslider. Someone's watching right now. You know. You know. You know you left. You know the excuse. That wasn't the real reason. You can blame someone that you're mad at, but if you're really mad at God, you'll just blame it on a human. What Cain did. Listen to me. God wants to get in your house. God wants to deliver you before it's too late. Well, if the church opens, I might come back. No, you you need to tell the devil I'm going back. I'm going back and I'm starting right now by raising my hands and saying, God, I'm sorry. I need your mercy. I need the truth. I need your grace. Your pastor's going to come up here right now. I want you in the Holy Ghost to unify whatever he says to do. I want you to do. I want you to unify under his authority. Whether you call this church your home or you've been walking away from God and the Lord's hand, you watch this broadcast for a reason. I want you to unify yourself. Something good's about to happen if you'll let it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Herring. Would you lift your hands right now, wherever you're at? And this is a time to surrender, God. I come to surrender my home, my heart, for you to come in, Lord, and be the Lord of all. I need you to be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. I want to surrender all again and again and again before you. I need 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 you more today than I've ever needed you before. God, come into this house, into this home, into this heart. And God, make it your own, I pray. We come, Lord, to yield it, to surrender, because you're my king. You're my Lord. You're my master. You're my savior and my redeemer. We surrender all to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're praying for an atmosphere shift. We're praying for an atmosphere shift. We're praying for an atmosphere shift. Hallelujah. We're already going to see tomorrow. Hallelujah. Some of you coming back to church. An atmosphere shift. A change. A change. A change is coming. A change is coming. Thank you, Brother Herring. Yes. For the word today, specifically. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Keep worship. Shift. Come on, change. Let the chains be broken. Claim it. Believe it. Call be in your home today. Let it continue. 
singing we're going to keep worshiping and reminding him that God reigns God reigns in our hearts and we're going to let him reign in our homes we love you we'll see you this week hopefully for our prayer nights seven o'clock on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday whenever you can whichever night if you signed up also in the mornings at 5 30 coming through the side doors for prayer if you'd like to come join us 
Let's let God reign. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock. Here again, Brother Herring will be ministering. Be sure to tune in. Invite somebody to tune in with you. Invite somebody to join us. God bless you. We love you very much.